गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू रीड क्लास सेवन एस एस टी पार्ट जोग्राफी चैप्टर नंबर सिक्स वैदर एंड क्लाइमेट पार्ट थर्ड इन द प्रीवियस वीडियोज आई एड एक्सप्लेन अबाउट द वैदर एंड क्लाइमेट एंड द फैक्टर विच अफेक्ट द क्लाइमेट दैट इज द डिफरेंट एल्टीट्यूड लैटीट्यूड डिस्टेंस फ्रॉम सी एंड अदर फैक्टर्स एंड इन द अनदर वीडियो आई एड एक्सप्लेन अबाउट द atmospheric pressure and the factors which affect the atmospheric pressure like altitude temperature moisture rotation of the earth as well as i had explained about the different pressure belt belonging to the equatorial low pressure subtropical high pressure subpolar low pressure and the polar regions so <clears throat> in the continuity of that how the wind affect the temperature of any particular place that we have to see in this video now beginning with the wind so what is wind the horizontal movement of air on the earth surface from an area of high pressure to area of low pressure so air moves always high pressure to low pressure so that movement of air is considered as air a wind basically so what is the instrument that is used to measure the speed of wind that is the anemometer the first diagram there you can see the cup anemometer that is uh, it is used to measure the speed of wind at what speed the wind is blowing the cup anemometer hot wire anemometer the weld anemometer the sonic anemometer the laser doppler anemometer and the other different style of anemometer anemometer so this is these are the other anemometer that are used for the different purpose is to uh, measure the speed of wind the another is the wind vane this is the instrument or device that is used to uh, know the direction of the wind means in which direction the wind is blowing so that for that purpose we need the wind vane as a device to uh, identify in which direction the wind is blowing <clears throat> the winds always uh, named after uh, the direction from which they blow that is when wind blow from the north or the southern side they are known as north or the south wind so means on to the base, uh, base of the direction the uh, the winds were given as the name the winds are blowing from the north north direction they are known as north wind and the winds which are blowing to the south direction they are considered as a south winds now look at the diagram that will help you to understand the different uh, different pressure belt that we have already read in the class, uh, in the previous video and the zones which is created by then and in that the winds which are blowing in those zones let us see starting with the equator so as you see the equator is there so equator is the zone that is also known as the doldrums or the itcz that you have read in the previous video so this zone is there because of the highest temperature that creates the equatorial low pressure belt and because of that the zones which comes under the is areas up to the 30 degree of uh, north and southern hemisphere that is create the cells different cells okay now there you can see the equator is situated over there the equator the air which is present at equator they get heated up earliest that you have read so the air when it get it get heated up earlier the air always move from the hotter to the colder areas that you know very well so there you can see the arrow from the equator they move toward the 30 degree north north and 30 degree south the arrow shows but the area when it it is been become vacant so how that area will fill so the air the cold air from 30 degree north and cold air from 30 degree south they will start coming toward the equator area again they will heat up so they will go to the again 30 degree north uh, and south again the 30 degree air will the air which is present in the 30 degree north and south they will go to the equator so they create the particular group or the atmosphere 
or that that particular atmosphere or the group is considered as the hadley cell so hadley cell is situated in the northern hemisphere as well as the uh, southern hemisphere there you can see the picture okay now moving to the next that is the uh, sub polar low pressure belt sub polar low pressure belt you have read in the previous video near about the 60 degree latitude तो 60 डिग्री लैटिट्यूड दैट इज द लो प्रेशर बेल्ट तो यू नो वेरी वेल द लो प्रेशर एयर इज मूव टूवर्ड द हाई प्रेशर बेल्ट सो दे यू कैन ऑल्सो सी द पिक्चर द लो प्रेशर एयर द एरो विच इज शोइंग टू द लो प्रेशर सिक्सटी डिग्री दैट कम टूवर्ड द थर्टी डिग्री टू द हाई प्रेशर बेल्ट एंड द हाई प्रेशर एयर विल गो टू द सिक्सटी डिग्री दैट इज द लो प्रेशर बेल्ट एंड सेम इन द पोलर रीजन ऑल्सो दे यू कैन सी द एरो the arrow the air which is present in the 60 degree that is the subpolar subpolar low pressure belt that will go towards the polar region the arrow you can see and the colder air from the polar region that they will come to the 60 degree so the area between the 60 degree to 30 degree in the northern and southern hemisphere is considered as the feral cell and the area which is from the 60 degree to 90 degree that is considered as the polar cell so this is the distribution of air where these cells are there to help you understand the different different zones that is created by the uh, latitudes and the uh, uh, the cells which is created by them so from 30 degree north to 30 degree south it is uh, hadley cells and from 30 to 60 degree north and south that is the feral cell and from 60 to 90 it is polar cell it is south and the west uh, north also now there you can see the westerlies westerlies the picture of westerlies you can see so from 30 degree to 60 degree from 30 degree to 60 degree the air which moves in the in these zones from 60 to 30 degree that air is considered as westerlies in the northern as well as the southern hemisphere so southern hemisphere is considered as southern westerlies or the northern hemisphere is considered as northern westerlies now moving to the next uh, towards the polar regions or equatorial regions there you can see the trades north easterly trades and the south easterly trades so this is also considered as north uh, trade winds so in the uh, region uh, in the region of northern hemisphere from equator to 30 degree that is the north trade north easterly trade winds and in the southern hemisphere that the trade winds are considered as the south easterly trade winds so these are the planetary winds they blow towards the whole year okay in the polar region from 9 from 60 to 90 degree there is one more also air is blow that is considered as the polar wind and because the air is too cold and dry that is why this this winds is considered as the polar wind so let us see each of the cell and the each of the winds into the explained explained way now the pattern of the movement of the planetary winds is called the general circulation of the atmosphere so the general circulation is considered as the planetary wind which is blow onto the earth surface the general circulation of atmosphere also set in motion the ocean water circulation which influences the earth climate so as i explained in the previous video that ocean water helps to regulate the climate of particular place so air is there the wind is there that helps the ocean to moves uh, from one one reason to another another reason the transfer of heat energy from lower latitude to higher latitudes maintain the general circulation so because of the air only it is possible the air moves the water to lower latitude latitude to the higher latitude as i said the hadley cells which is found in, in into the 30 degrees north up to the 30 degrees southern hemisphere this zone is also considered as uh, the uh intertropical convergent zone and because the convection current caused by the low pressure and the low pressure in turn occurs due to the high insulation the wind from the tropics converges at the at this low pressure zone so this is the zone where 
द ऑल द एयर कन्वर्जेज एट द इक्वेटर बट बिकॉज ऑफ द कॉर्लिस फोर्स द एयर विच इज विच इज टू बी कन्वर्स हेयर दे गेट डिफ्लेक्टेड इन टू द लेफ्ट साइड इन द नॉर्दर्न एमोस्फेयर एंड इन द राइट साइड इन द साउथर्न एमोस्फेयर द नेक्स्ट सेल डेट इज यू कैन सी द मिडिल लेटीट्यूड फ्रॉम थर्टी टू सिक्सटी डिग्री इन द नॉर्थ एंड साउदर्न एमोस्फेयर दिस लेटीट्यूड इज सर्कुलेशन is that of shrinking cold air that comes from the poles and rising warm air that blows from the subtropical highs so this is where the pol polar air and the subtropical air merges mix it mix with each other at the surface these winds called the westerlies uh, as i explained in the uh, that is in the westerlies wind so these are the cell which is created by the westerlies that is known as feral cell and uh, at the polar latitudes the cold dense air subsid subsidizes near the poles and blow toward the middle latitude as the polar westerlies this cell is known as, the, known as the polar cell so basically the colder air which is present at the poles when they move toward the 60 degree up to the sub polar low pressure areas in the northern and southern hemisphere that creates the polar cell now let us see the different planetary winds that creates the particular uh, place places particular place and uh, climate of a place so let us see the with the planetary wind the planetary wind blow from the high pressure belt to low pressure belt throughout the year means they are permanent wind they blow the whole year they are they are the of three types first is the trade winds that blows into the zone of 30 degrees uh, north and the 30 degree south so these the trade winds are those blowing from the subtropical high pressure area toward the equatorial low pressure belt from the 30 degree to north to 30 degree south from the 30 degree south to the equator areas they flow as the north eastern trade in the northern hemisphere and south eastern trade in the southern hemisphere so the wind blow in the north hemisphere they are considered as north eastern and the wind which is blow in the south eastern uh, southern hemisphere they are considered as the south eastern trade winds so why they considered as trade wind because they name, given the name as trade wind because in the earliest time the trade traders used this wind to reach one place to another for the trade purposes so that is why these winds are considered were considered as a trade winds and those names were still using as a name of a wind which create which is created at the uh, 30 degree 30 degree north and southern that is the hadley cell this deflection in their ideally expected north south direction is explained on the basis of corlisis force and the feral laws so this is because of the corlisis force and feral law the movement of air that gets swift or the get gets change when while the air reaches up to the equatorial region because of the corlisis force or the feral law trade winds are descending and stable in areas of their origin so from where it is originate they originated from the subtropical high pressure belt and as they reach to the equator they become humid and warmer after picking up the moisture on the way so when the air which blows from the subtropical high pressure belt they have the uh, humid and warmer because when they coming towards the equator areas you know very well the land heated up early and get cools early so the land when get it it, it heated up so the air which is present over there the air is also get heated up so winds the trade winds what did what they do they, they take the hot one hot air hot and humid air with them to the equator so the trade winds uh, from two hemisphere meet at the equator due to convergence they rises and cause heavy rainfall so the the heat the the warm air which is brought by the subtropical areas they started converging at the equator and after converging so that there is already temperature at the equator area that creates the rainfall in the equatorial regions the eastern part of the trade winds associated with the cool ocean current and drier 
and more stable than the western part of the ocean though there is very less uh, very less land is in the western part uh, uh, in comparison to the eastern part so eastern part of the trade winds is associated with the cold ocean current because the wind the land surfaces are there and because of the uh, the because of the land it's uh, it's get up heated early and cold early because of that only the eastern part of the uh, uh, of the hemisphere is get the cold current and the drier next is the polar winds or the polar storms so the winds which is blow in the polar regions the polar storms are dry and cold prevailing winds blowing from the north east to south west direction in the northern hemisphere and south east to the north east north west in the uh, uh, southern hemisphere basically so the polar storms the polar winds which is blow into the polar regions they are dry and cold also in the northern hemisphere the wind blow from north east to south west and in the southern hemisphere wind blow to the south east from the uh, from the south east to the north east this is the direction of the polar storms at the polar polar regions they blow from the polar high pressure belt to the subpolar lows so basically they blow from the polar region to the subpolar low pressure belt the again the next one is the westerlies from 30 degree latitude to the 60 degree latitude the westerlies that are blow uh, that uh, uh, winds that blows from the subtropical high pressure belt toward the sub low sub low pressure belt so the wind which is blow from the subtropical high pressure belt to sub polar low pressure belt means from 30 degree to the 60 degree that is the feral belt or the feral cell they blow from the south west to the north east in the northern hemisphere as you have seen their direction get changes at the uh, at the polar region they they uh, in the northern hemisphere they move from north east to south west but in the uh, in the 30 to 60 degrees latitude they move toward the south west to north east and opposite in the southern hemisphere in the polar region the wind move from south east to north west but in the uh, 30 to 60 degree they move from north west to south east the westerlies of the southern hemisphere are stronger and present due to the vast empire expense of water while those of the northern hemisphere are irregular because uneven relief of the vast land masses so when we move towards the northern hemisphere there is a lot of land masses and because of the land masses uh there is the the westerlies get disturbed but in the southern hemisphere westerlies are stronger and persistent because of there is no land mass and because of that only there is only ocean so though they blows very faster very uh, stronger in the no southern hemisphere instead of the northern hemisphere the westerlies are the best developed between the 40 to 65 degree latitudes these latitudes are called roaring fortitudes so forties so the latitude on which the westerlies blow at the 40 degree 40 degree latitude that is known as roaring forties the wind which is the westerlies which is blow at the 50 degree latitude that is the furious fifties and the wind which is or the westerlies which is blow at the 60 degree latitude that is known as shrieking sisties or the screeching sisties so this is the terms which is given by the sailors those who sails in the 30 degree to 60 degree latitudes the poleward boundary of the westerlies is highly fluctuating there are many seasonal short term fluctuation these winds produce the wet spell and variability in the weather so basically westerlies create the variability in the weather into the regions which is comes under the 30 to 60 degree latitudes now moving towards the other periodic winds the uh, beyond the planetary wind which is permanent let us move to the periodic winds which does not move always so basically these winds 
they they change their direction with the change in season when there is a change in season the changes their direction the monsoon are characterized by the seasonal reversal of the wind direction so monsoon is characterized as a seasonal reversal of the wind direction when wind direction get reverse so they creates the monsoon during the summer the trade winds of the southern hemisphere are pulled to pull northward by an apparent northward movement of the sun so in the summer season what will happen thus in the summer season the north the southern hemisphere it moved toward the it til tilted towards the north uh, it the sun rays comes directly to the uh, northern hemisphere basically so that creates the low pressure core and in the northwest of the indian subcontinent so because of that only the temperature of the northern hemisphere is rises up and here the uh, uh, that creates the monsoon season because of the monsoon the southwest uh, the monsoon get reaches up to these areas because of the temperature in the summer season you have noticed in the summer season the temperature is rises so what will happen the air molecules which is present at the uh, equatorial region they coming towards the indian subcontinent and those winds brought the moisture with them water vapor with them and that creates the monsoon or the rain at the indian subcontinent or the southeast asia southwest asia is basically during winters these condition are reversed and high pressure core is created in the north in the indian subcontinent so this is change in the winter season so what will happen the southern hemisphere will go upward and the northern hemisphere will go beyond so because of that the pressure will become change so high pressure is created in the north of the indian subcontinent so because of that high pressure created the temperature is more and the cold air is present over there and that is why we feel the cold during the winter season because of the high pressure is created by the wind the divergent winds are produced by the anti cyclonic movement which travel the southward toward the equator so during this time only the divergent winds are there they pre- provide they produce the anti cyclonic movement and they travel from southward toward the equator means from the equator they travel the southern hemisphere this movement enhances the apparent southward movement of the sun these are the east northeast and winter monsoon which are responsible for some pre- precipitation along the east coast of india so when the northern hemisphere the southern hemisphere is uh, come to the direct con- means the southern hemisphere reaches the sun rays reaches directly to the southern hemisphere that creates the temperature more over here and the air started again moving from low pressure to high pressure and high pressure to low pressure that creates the rainfall into the coastal regions of the india there is another periodic wind that is the land bridge and sea bridge that is also created because uh, you have already heard that the land bridge and sea bridge it is uh, 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 during the day time the land heat up faster and become warmer than the sea therefore over the land of land the air rises and giving rise to the low pressure area so when air rises in the land areas they create the low pressure area whereas the sea is relatively cool and pressure over sea is relatively high so pressure uh, when the sea is cool and because of that there is high pressure um, uh, and the land is warmer so they create the low pressure thus pressure gradient from the sea to land is created and the wind wind blow from the sea to land as a sea wind so uh, the land the wind blow from the sea to land it is considered as sea wind sea bridge and in the night the reversal of condition take place the land losses is heat faster and it's cooler than the sea and that creates the land bridges means the movement from the land to sea so these are the some of the uh, some of the periodic winds which blow into the 
एट अर्थ एटमोसफियर नाउ मूविंग टूवर्ड द लोकल विंड्स और द टेरिटोरी विंड्स विच विच ब्लो इन टू द पर्टिकुलर एरिया लाइक द लू सो लू इज द लोकल विंड विच विच ब्लो इन द पर्टिकुलर एरिया इन द प्लेन्स ऑफ नॉर्दर्न इंडिया एंड पाकिस्तान इट इज हार्मफुल विंड बेसिकली बिकॉज समटाइम्स इट इज़ वेरी हॉट एंड ड्राई एंड इट ब्लोज इन द मंथ ऑफ मे एंड जून इन द आफ्टरनून एंड द टेम्परेचर ड्यूरिंग दैट टाइम फोर्टी फाइव टू फिफ्टी डिग्री सेल्सियस डैट कर्ज द सन स्ट्रोक टू द पीपल मीन्स इट इट इज़ हार्मफुल फॉर द पीपल दोज आर लिविंग इन दिस एरियाज द अनदर एयर द लोकल विंड्स विच इज़ ब्लो दैट इज फोहन और फोन दैट इज द बेनिफिशियल विंड बिकॉज the hot winds of the lo- uh, local importance in the alps so alps mountains are there that is uh, the altitude one so hot wind blow in this areas and it is strong and gusty dry and warm wind which develop the leeward side of the mountains mountain range so it create the leeward side so leeward side did not get the ho- hot and warm air as the windward side means where the where the hot wind get strike they takes away whatever moisture is moisture there uh, is in the co- incoming wind and form the orographic precipitation the air that denses and leeward side is dry and warm a catabatic wind basically the wind it creates the leeward side and the westward side because of the alps mountain so leeward side is remain dry and warm and the westward side is there where the winds and the moisture is more the temperature of wind varies from 15 degree to 20 degree celsius the that helps the animal grazing and melting snow and aids the ripening of the grapes so this this hot winds or the foin is helping for the temp- rising of the temperature and because of that create the melting of snow snow started get melting and the ripening of the grapes because of the highest temperature as well as when it creates the growth of the grasses which helps the animals to feed over there the chinook wind chinook wind is found in the us and canada areas uh, it is found in the rockies mountains sorry it is found in the rockies mountains and it is beneficial to the ranches east of the rockies as it keeps the grassland clear of the snow during much of the winter so during the winter season also the chinook wind helps to create the to make the ice or the snow melt and because of that only the grasslands are appear and grasslands were uh, used by the animals which is present over there so that is why the chinook is very helpful also there is uh, uh, many other local winds like chili pamparo in argentina th- that is the strong and cold wind uh, the and another that is the mistral in france that is strong and cold the willy one uh, willy wow it is in south america so these are some of the local winds which blow in these in the different areas of the world so this is the topic that we have to discuss in this video the next topic will discuss the humidity as well as precipitation which help us to create the different climatic condition thank you students